This is the HP 8300 small form factor. Very common machine if you're looking for a PC to buy, especially a desktop here in Uganda. Today, let's upgrade this guy to something worth using. Let's turn this into one gaming machine, an editing machine. Let's just twist it all around and turn it into something worth using. Let's go. Ole! 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 Now, when you're looking for a desktop to buy in Uganda, high chances you're going to land yourself one of these tiny machines. Even if you're not in Uganda, whatever country you're in, you will always have access to one of these small form factor HPs. Reason being, they really, really sold well and they did really well in the corporate environment. Now, many of them are being sold off for cheap, so you can always find one really cheap. So if you get one, good. Now let's get straight into the internals of this machine. How are we going to upgrade it to make it, you know, able to play some good games and also able to do some video editing, basically just beef up the internals. So step one is we're going to have to take it apart. Now, under normal circumstances, this HP has a, a latch over here, but like you see, this one was a very, very cheap machine that I bought of somebody in Kampala and uh, the latch was broken over there. And as you can see, this was built, it's an iCore, i5 with a vpro and this here did come with windows 7. now looking at the internals what i like about these machines is there's not really much going on on the inside there's not too much trickery you have your cpu under here this cooling uh point over here like that the radiator fan shroud the fan now you have a dvd rom your power source your hard drive goes somewhere down there and that basically is it now to upgrade this machine to something that one can play some good games and also i can use as an editing machine a lot of this stuff has got to go step one is you need to upgrade your processor now you can always pick up a processor this particular motherboard came with the third generation processor so if you buy one which is an i5 this one i can't stress enough if you're going to buy this with hopes of upgrading the processor make sure you buy like an i5 because the i5 will allow you buy an i7 if you buy the dual core versions most times it's a hit and miss sometimes you find the socket does not support it so in this particular case um we have an i5 and i already did manage to upgrade it to an i7 for the process of that um it's actually very very simple this you know you take this bit out this uh fan shroud this is your fan over here that's supposed to blow in in that direction and then you take this bit off with four screws that gives you access to the processor under it remove it swap it out now you need to know what you're doing here in case you don't know what you're doing when swapping out processors one either you just let it be or two watch very many youtube videos and be very very careful with that you don't want to damage the pins on the so you know, on the socket of the motherboard and again you also don't want to damage your processor but it's actually very very simple four screws and some paste and you change out the processor if you don't have money to upgrade processor um you can as well just stick to the i5 you have but processors for these generations of machines have really become a lot a lot cheaper now um next what we are going to do is let's just take this a little bit apart if you notice now once we do this this here is your power supply this here is your hard drive now this hard drive here is your ordinary mechanical hard drive you not know, the spinning one this here is very slow so we're going to have to upgrade things a little bit and then if i lift this up here also you notice this is a dvd rom when was the last time you had anybody give you a physical dvd so we're going to be using these ports uh here these connectors to upgrade to something else now so now let's get to the juicy bits of the whole equation. First of all, advantage is our motherboard can take a maximum of 32 GB RAM. Now, the 32 GB RAM can easily fit into these four slots. We have one, two, three, and four. Four slots over here for RAM. So we can always up, you know, push it up to 32 GB. Now, since I'm working on a budget, I won't be able to push it all the way to 32 GB, but we do have some RAM. Now, these uh, particular RAM chips here, I have uh, two, two, and i think this is uh yes this is two that is two uh yeah basically i have two gb across all board so that will be two four six eight so at, as for now as we build this i am putting in eight but eventually what i will do is i'll start upgrading these slots to eight single single eight uh ram slots one by one reason being is getting a single eight chip is quite hard and this is ddr3 so yeah ddr3 ram so getting it in a single eight sometimes is tricky but if you can get it in fours that also does so to do four eight and then you four another four eight making it 16 but what i'm going to do is just simple just keep swapping them out one by one two and eight to fit the ram in 
all you have to do is look at this notch over here and follow it with that notch over there now we're just going to slide that in there we go now of course i'm upgrading this i'm updating this uh, adding in a little bit more ram uh originally it came with just uh, one gb uh ram slot and trust me that was too 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 slow windows would take like a really long time you'd boot up windows and even go and have tea and come back and snatch it downloading that's how slow it was next on the line is we need to have something faster now this here is our mechanical drive there's a lot of data on here lots of music files so what we're going to do is we're not going to install windows on this we shall make sure we get something faster and something faster in that case will be an ssd in this particular case i have uh, just a 128 gb ssd this one uh, right speed at about 3 gbps it's not a very new one i know there are faster ones than this but this one will get the job done as of now so we're going to be putting in an ssd so that we have a lot faster boot times now what i'm going to do is uh, we're going to leave the hard drive in this one in particular is going to stay in for my data so that this 128 since it's small is just going to have windows and a few chosen applications now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to leave all these pins down here and now I'm going to borrow this cable from the DVD drive. We don't really necessarily need the DVD drive. I never really use it. So all I'm going to do now is uh, plug that in here. Plug that in there. Okay, good. And then I'm just going to casually slot that in here. Let me just make sure these pins are okay. There we go. Just going to slot it under there make sure it is sitting well because i don't expect to be moving the computer all over the place just sliding it there should do the trick and now we can rest this back down being careful not to break anything okay that has locked in position and now we can put back our power supply into position as well good that too has locked in position and now by just doing this one we have pushed our ram up more than eight times what you know it came with because it came with one gb we've pushed it all the way to eight in by the time i'm done in a, a day or so i'll have added in an extra eight pushing us to about 14. so that will have been a massive upgrade we've switched our processor out unfortunately i didn't have i didn't i lost that video when i was switching this out but it's actually a very simple process so recap we have an i7 much much more ram and we have an ssd make sure i put this back over here all right that looks back there now one more thing i want to add into this machine now to make it able to handle like a bit of video editing and some gaming is a graphics card now this is where things get very crazy um graphics cards go insanely expensive if you go hunting for one but in this case we're dealing with a really tight budget and something that is affordable something that anybody can get and also the other reason as to why i'm looking for a graphics card is the display port the vga port on this motherboard here does not work so in the particular case i have this guy now those on the internet already know what this guy is and they must be making noise this is the um the nvidia you know 710 uh with a 2gb ddr3 um video ram people hate this graphics card like they really hate it i saw somebody using it as a guitar one point people hate this graphics card they say it's very slow they say it, but well what i can say is a week graphics card is better than no graphics card in my view so and in this particular case my machine doesn't display so this here now is going to give me you know, it will give me vga over here and then it will also give me hdmi now i went ahead and installed the low profile um shrouding because you see this here is a low profile case and even if i bought let's say a bigger graphics card it wouldn't fit this body because this body is a low profile it's really this thin so you're kind of limited with what you can go with so in order to install that i'll be installing it into that slot all we do is pop this over here and then line it up line it up line it up with the with the slot okay now so done with that just push down and it locks into place and then we have this uh, vga port here just line that up into the slot and once we're done lining that up into the slot it too will lock in place and then 
we just lock that back done and we're done upgrading our machine we have our ram we have a very good processor move to ssd and now we have put in a graphics card right that is it for the upgrade part of this here computer next let's move over and do some benchmarking what kind of stuff can this here do let's run a couple of benchmarks to see if our upgrades are actually worth it where do we rank on the system